What is going on Babylonians? It's right, it's Songs of Rays back with another Outriders video to bring to you and today we're going to look at the build that I primarily use when we're starting to do stream carries and this is for when I do my Technomancer, this is when we do our Eye of the Storms and obviously Dan Waz goes for his debuff pyro most of the time just because we know that Yagak needs a lot of debuffs uh, to be able to make him that instant 1-2 to two second kill that you kind of need and kind of expect before those Reavers kind of come in and basically f*** your s*** up. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it down, we're going to have a look as to why I go for what I do, we're going to have a look as to the synergy of the actual build, we're going to explain why I go and make the decisions that I have done, and we're going to look into how effective it actually is in a standard expedition, and obviously you'll see on streams how effective it is at Eye of the Storm. So let's go, let's crack into it, let's have a look, And but first we're going to go with this message right here. So before we go any further, I just want to make sure, stop this video and make sure that you hit that subscribe button that can be found down below. We're starting to be on the ball when it comes to news, any kind of buffs, nerves, uh, all those kind of things and features that could be done could be done better and that, that goes for skills as well, obviously with the Bold Dash video that we did the other day. Uh, we're also starting to look more into builds, whether that be for Technomancer, whether that be for Devastator, Pyro, Trickster, you name it, we are on the case with that kind of thing. So if you need any kind of uh, one-stop shop for anything that's Outriders related, make sure that you subscribe to Babylon and we'll bring in that right to your door. So this build definitely varies from that of the gold standard DPS uh, Technomancer build that I did a number of weeks back and that's there's a main reason for this and this is it kind of is the main reason behind Eye of the Storm kind of carries and that's the reason why fixing wave and the cycle mods goes hand in hand to be able to increase our single target DPS and it does it in such a way that we actually do see massive amounts of crit damage uh, when we're actually going into Eye of the Storm and hitting Yagak for even before we actually apply the debuff pyro side of things we're actually able to do a lot of damage by ourselves so how it kind of works is the three main skills that we're looking at is cold snap blighted rounds and fixing wave now cold snap is there one to be able to trigger our borealis extra critical damage effect but it also uh, activates a massive freeze to most enemies in front of us the reason why we, we want that as well is we want a reliable way to be able to inflict freeze uh, it's also a really good panic button uh, which just help, really helps out and the fact that we've got the cascading uh, explosion effects from the tier 3 mod as well and that for Icicle Storm uh, it really helps out for those kind of uh, group activities or wh when we've got loads of enemies to worry about uh, especially when you're holding one of the plates in Eye of the Storm you can easily get overrun especially if one, if one of you, each of you are holding their own separate plates um, and as a Technomancer you really do struggle if something gets up close for you so therefore Cold Snap is there to uh, activate your multipliers it's there to activate as a panic button uh, and it just really does help with all those tiny explosions when you start killing those little guys so when we're going with fixing wave is one it's in the same middle tree so when you get cooldown reductions for your cold snap you're also getting cooldown reduction for fixing wave fixing wave keeps you alive uh, which the main real issue that you have as a technomancer is because most of the time you are kind of squishy compared to the other characters um, and fixing wave obviously helps to keep your health in the fact that you get a nice 66 percent of your max health as standard and to any kind of players that are nearby uh, it really helps to keep you alive as well as any of your teammates the fact that you can then go for fixer upper as a tier one mod uh, then gives you the extra health regen to be able to keep yourself uh, healthy so if it really will fill up the rest of that 66 percent or if you're continuously still getting hit after you activate the skill it will help to keep you alive uh, but the main reason we use that is for the health regen and the fact that you get a five percent boost to your health regen activates the cycle and the cycle then goes from doing zero percent for you to 50 percent as we extra weapon damage and because it's we extra weapon damage it's at the start of the calculations which means that it then gets fed through into all the other things that go on so blighted rounds extra damage to toxic extra damage to freeze critical shots you name it basically everything will be then multiplied on top of it and that really is such a nice boost uh, as on top of the fact that you're now keep keeping yourself healthy and blighted rounds is a standard let's be honest if we're going for a firepower build as a technomancer you're never going to be without blighted rounds and that's the fact that resistance in this game on enemies is much lower than that of armor so therefore you'll be bypassing so much of the damage reduction and you'll just be doing uh, just a massive amount of damage uh, just as standard and the fact that it also has splash so it can affect enemies that are also nearby uh, is quite, kind of like a pseudo uh, ultimate damage link it really does help out with all those ad clearings and it really does help to spread that toxic around 
Now you're going to ask me why am I not going for uh, the uh, the blighted turret to be able to consistently activate my 40% extra weapon damage? Why am I going for fixing wave instead of uh, scrapnel to be able to activate the extra 30% damage capstone that you can do? And while those are really good options, uh, especially offensively, they're also really good for uh, being solo player that's trying to take on Eye of the Storm. Uh, courtesy, I've noticed that courtesy of watching the world record run for Danelius, who's a member of our Discord. Um, he managed to do an amazing run. He's, he's obviously he's the best technomancer when it comes to doing a solo eye of the storm run, and that was the build that he went for. And honestly, hats off to him because that clearly does work. But if you're going for a co-op kind of experience, I don't think it's the best one to go for. I do feel like it's best to actually go around using the cycle to be able to keep uh, your teammates alive. I do think Cold Snap is a really nice way to be able to inflict mass amounts of freeze, but also to be able to uh, activate that extra critical hit damage. And then that really feeds back into the debuff pyro. So the only main downside to this build is the fact that the majority of your damage comes from when you inflict freeze onto an enemy. Now, most of the time this isn't a problem because you've got a gun that inflicts freeze, uh, obviously you've got Dark Sacrifice on there to increase your amount of damage, you're still able to sustain yourself and you're still able to deal a decent amount of damage just from purely toxic because you are, at, the, at you know, in the foremost, uh, a toxic top tree firepower bit te technomancer so you you're, at the end of the day you're not going to have any real issues what you will see is the massive amount of damage that you will inflict once you start hitting uh enemies that are inflicted with freeze so whether you use cold snap or whether you use the gun that's got freeze uh, as a tier 2 mod you, you'll, you'll see massive amounts of damage now you can potentially get away with this from using the absolute zero assault rifle it won't do as much damage just purely for the fact that um, the base damage on a fully auto assault rifle compared to a burst is not as much as a burst now at the end of the day you can still use that and it will uh, obviously freeze a bit more often and you'll you'll see your damage kind of spike a little bit more because of that so if you are looking for a full auto version or you're looking for uh, a more easier gun to be able to use then by all means try it with the absolute zero you won't have any issues whatsoever but we are looking for the highest damage because this is for carries and this is primarily for what i'd use for eye of the storm so therefore as soon as yakak spawns i need to be pounding with as much damage as physically possible into his head uh, and the absolute zero doesn't necessarily help me out with that where because obviously it starts at such low damage i'd rather have something that i can use the cycle with to be able to boost an already high number much higher and then obviously then go into there now the only other thing that you need to be aware of when i do and this this only kind of really applies to yaga or i of the storm it doesn't necessarily apply to any of the other kind of expeditions is that um, it's best to have another rifle as a backup. Now, uh, what you can do is have another burst rifle, like I'm using in the background, uh, and this one is got uh, is basically set up the exact same way. So crit damage, long range damage, and you can either use close range uh, or healing. Or it, technically, the third uh, the third one doesn't necessarily matter as much. Uh, close range is obviously going to be your best call, but is to instead have freezing bullets on your tier 2 mod is to have something like grave diggers uh, and what this does is it gives you an extra 50% for 5 seconds on your critical hit damage so how I uh, usually do an eye of the storm uh, for a kit for a stream is I will wait for Yagak to spawn Obviously, you can activate Blighted Round straight away, but don't just hold off for a second because uh, your freezing gun is not going to be the one that we're going to be using to be able to inflict the, all the damage at the end. So you uh, wait for a couple of seconds because apparently status and some skills can't be activated straight away. You inflict freeze, so you hit him with a crit. Inflict the freeze, make sure he's got the status on his name. Swap over to your other rifle that has the Grave Diggers and Dark Sacrifice on. Uh, activate your Blighted Round so you get that. Use your cold, uh, cold snap to be able to help you out with the little bit of freeze and obviously get that extra 10% critical hit damage that you get from the Borealis and then activate your hit, your uh, healing wave or your fixing wave to be able to then get yourself that extra 50% weapon damage bonus. And as soon as you start hitting the head on Yagak and you start hitting, hitting those critical shots, your, your damage will also skyrocket from that as well. And that's purely from the fact that we're just getting an extra 50% of critical damage in there. Um, obviously, as soon as you start putting debuffs into there, you'll be easily hitting anywhere between 9 to 10 mil crits uh, and you yeah, just literally won't stand a chance so that's why i recommend this build that's why i recommend having another backup that is also an assault rifle that's just got a slightly different setup but it's still important that it has crit damage and it has long range rolled onto it and then it has grave diggers as the tier 2 mod
Now I've been asked by the comments section to be able to provide something a little bit easier uh, at the end of the video to be able to help you out uh, with uh, taking like a screenshot, taking, uh, taking something away from this video to be able to help you recreate so at a glance uh, how, how to be able to make this build. So if you haven't already, head over to uh, Outriders Outpost. This can be found online. It's a really handy app. It really does help uh, with basically like summarizing everything that you're going to be able to do for a build. Uh, and it allows you to, whether you're looking forward to making a build, it allows you to, how, and to add those stuff in so you can actually set yourself a template going forward. Or in the, in the case of ourselves, as, as YouTubers that are making content for you to be able to make those new builds, uh, it allows us to be able to summarize everything that we've just talked about and just put it into one single image. So I'm going to put that screenshot up on the uh, on the uh, on the video right now, so you can actually just take that away with you, and then you can go apply it to yourselves and in your own games. Now that pretty much wraps up the build, uh, and obviously the the extra gameplay that's in the background, I'm just going to loop over. The only reason why is because if you've see, if you've joined any of our streams, and if you have, thank you so much. If you haven't, where are you being? Because obviously, it's you know it's Babylon at the end of the day. We, we're coming to stream Outriders to you to be able to give you the chance to be able to play with us. So that's a Monday and a Thursday at 9 p.m. British Standard Time at the moment. Um, sorry, self uh, shameless plug there, right there, but. Um, You'll have seen the damage numbers that can pop up. Uh, you can see how good this build can actually handle itself. You can see how it really performs uh, in an end game kind of scenario. So you know full well that this build can definitely do the damage that you need it to. So if you haven't already, head over to one of our previous streams. You can actually watch uh, watch back or some of the stuff that we've already done. You can see all the damage numbers that have been done there. Uh, or make sure you tune into the next stream and you'll actually see me be able to run this build as well. Um, and just you know, give it a go. Uh, have, it, have a play around with it. I highly recommend this build over basically any of the other builds that I've kind of suggested for a Technomancer so far. I genuinely do feel like this is the meta one. I do feel like this is the best one to go forward. Uh, and it just has the best utility. It has the best survivability for you and your teammates and has the highest kind of like ceiling in terms of damage if we weren't going into rifles. Now, this build can be applied to rifles as well. Uh, I am actually doing a little bit of testing with that just to see how high I can actually get this to go. And then I will actually be taking that into uh, a scenario where I've got two other Technomancers that are top tree, boosting me up as well, and also using Fixing Wave to be able to use Fixer Upper to be able to give me that extra boost as well. I want to see how high of a crit damage we can do. I want to see the highest number that's physically possible for just Technomancers, and then I also want to put it into a debuff, and I want to find the right kind of balance, because I do feel like this is the best way to be able to get the most damage out of uh, just Outriders in general, or just one single shot. So fingers crossed, and I'll let you know how that testing goes. So like I said, that pretty much wraps up this build video. So that just leaves us time to be able to thank every single member of the Babylonian family, which you can see their names popping up right about now. If you're interested in being able to support Babylon as a, as a channel, or you're interested in getting your name put onto some of the videos, then by all means, click that join button that's found right next to the subscribe button. It really is just as simple as 99p a month. Just be able to get yourself on in open stars on our videos. Uh, and it really does let us know that we really do mean that much to you in terms of making that content. and it really does mean a lot to us as well so as always keep yourself safe keep yourself well and i'll see you all on our next video